Continuing 8.4, Effects of Subsidence in Soil Volume Change. Groundwater conditions in karst environments involve cave systems that create direct access between surface and groundwater. This makes the groundwater very vulnerable to pollution, especially as sinkholes are often used as garbage dumps, the endless pit scenario. Groundwater levels respond rapidly to change in moisture conditions, meaning that spring discharge that supports local ecology and humans may wildly fluctuate. Melting of permafrost has caused roads to cave in, airport runways to fracture, railroad tracks to buckle, and buildings to crack, tilt, or collapse such as this apartment building in Chersky in eastern Siberia. Personally, I'd be glad to move away from any area with permafrost, but I wouldn't be so happy about losing money and possessions. Coastal flooding and loss of wetlands, such as the Mississippi Delta and the sinking of New Orleans, currently up to 16 feet below sea level, Wetlands are eroding, subsiding, and being modified for hydrocarbon extraction, which leads to decreased protection from storm surges. The image below shows New Orleans and the velocity of soil subsidence in millimeters per year. The darkest red locations are subsiding at negative 28.6 to negative 17.6 millimeters per year. The bright yellow colored areas are subsiding at rates of about negative 6.6 to negative 6.3 millimeters per year. And the darkest blue areas are subsiding at rates of negative 1.79 to rising 10.3 millimeters per year. Now, 6 millimeters per year of subsidence might not seem like much but combine that with sea level rising, loss of wetlands, and increased storm intensity and surges, and things begin to add up. And it adds up to more flooding of New Orleans, which is expensive for their whole entire country. Here's an image of a home foundation. In 1956, the foundation was on the ground. Currently, the foundation is 10 to 16 inches above ground. Like I said, a few millimeters a year adds up. Soil volume change is responsible for billions of dollars of damage annually to highways, buildings, and structures. It affects approximately 70% of newly constructed homes, so if you buy a new home, your chances are really good at experiencing the soil volume change hazard. Frost action on roads costs $2 billion each year. This is due to faster upward movement of larger particles than smaller particles, up to two inches per year. Damage caused by soil volume change exceeds the cost of all other natural hazards combined, but is rarely considered a problem worthy of public attention. The image to the right is from Alaska. It's a frost heaved steel pipe bridge spanning the North Fork. So here's a cartoon of expansive soil. That's the soil that has a lot of clay minerals that expand and shrink as the soil moisture increases and decreases respectively. Some features we can see are large soil cracks, wavy bumps in the road, sidewalk buckles, and tilted poles, whether utility or house piers. In addition, remember the popcorn texture of swelled soil and cracked texture of dried out soil. You can see how the effects of this hazard would be expensive to fix. But you can also see that most people just kind of deal with it. The sidewalk buckle is annoying but usually not annoying enough to replace the sidewalk. Maybe just grind it down. A window that sticks in a house is also annoying, but rarely does anyone fix it. They just use a bit more force or open a different window. And we just save our money to move to a new home where the problem doesn't exist yet. 
The next cartoon is of frost susceptible soil. The symptoms are similar to expansive soil. Cracks, tilted poles, damaged foundations, but in this scenario the frost heaves are large object, objects up through the soil. The large objects can be stones, fence posts, bridges, whatever. So if you have been wondering why you are always getting large stones in your garden, you now know why. Frost heaving. But how? Well, it's the ice. Think of ice forming under a buried boulder. Now you may not know this, but the vapor pressure by ice is lower than regular water, so ice gets more ice depositing on it. The same thing happens in clouds, which we will talk about in a different chapter. As the ice lens grows, it also expands, because frozen water expands. This pushes the boulder up. As the ice lens begins to melt, soil is able to flow into the void, but the boulder is still supported by the remaining ice lens. Eventually, the ice lens totally melts, but the space has been filled in by soil, so the boulder doesn't sink back down, but has been heaved just a little bit closer to the surface. Hence, frost heaving causes the upward movement of larger particles, including fence posts. Unfortunately, frost heaving is not a uniform process, so not all of your fence posts are going to rise at the same rate. And more critically, not all of your foundation will rise at the same rate either. This causes quite a bit of damage that most of us just deal with. 8.5 Linkages between subsidence, soil volume change, and other natural hazards. Subsidence and soil volume change can be an effect of earthquakes, volcanoes, and climate change. Earthquakes can shake a potential sinkhole into existence and a volcano can produce lava tubes that later collapse. Climate changes dry soil and lowers groundwater table or some areas of some areas and can increase soil moisture and raise the groundwater table in other areas. Can you think of other ways earthquakes, volcanoes, and climate change can affect the subsidence and soil volume change hazard? If you want to tell me, email me your ideas. And if I think they're good, I'll post them. On the flip side, subsidence and soil volume change may cause flooding and mass wasting. For instance, delta subsidence causes coastal flooding, and frost heaving and swelling soils cause creep. This list is not all inclusive. Can you think of other ways the subsidence and soil volume change hazard can exacerbate other natural hazards? Again, if you want to tell me, email me your ideas. And if I think they're good, I'll post them. 8.6 Natural Service Functions of Subsidence and Soil Volume Change the expansion and shrinkage of soil produces useful ped structure that enhances soil productivity by facilitate, facilitating root growth and soil drainage. Other natural service functions are mainly for karst terrains. Karst regions contain the world's largest, most abundant water supply. Caves and other karst features are strange and beautiful as well as having scientific resources as we find new environments and ecosystems deep underground. These unique ecosystems have many species of animals that can live only in caves. Troglobites. Caves also provide shelter for other animals and humans too. The three images below depict some of the strange and beautiful aspects of caves. The image on the left are soda straws hollow in the middle, just like a straw. The image in the middle are those giant gypsum crystals in some caves in Mexico. Imagine walking in a geode. And the image on the right are helictites. Don't mind gravity. 8.7 human interaction with subsidence and soil volume change. 
some subsidence in soil volume change really isn't our fault. We just happen to be there. But this first one we'll discuss really is our fault. Withdrawal of fluids from the subsurface by pumping fluids such as oil, natural gas, water, groundwater, etc. Decreases fluid pressure, causing rocks to subside. As these fluids are not easy or impossible to be replaced, we call this fluid mining. Areas subsiding due to fluids mining often have earth fissures, as seen in the picture on the bottom left from Arizona. And we've already seen the dramatic picture on the right showing ground elevation decreasing drastically over 50 years of extensive groundwater pumping in San Joaquin Valley, California. Next human cause subsidence we'll discuss is underground mining. Coal mine structures have collapsed. These mines often target coal seams fairly close to the surface. Salt mines often use water to dissolve and pump out salt, leaving behind cavities that can then collapse. Additionally, flooding into salt mines, either solution or open shaft, can also cause sinkholes. Melting permafrost can also be our fault. Global warming causes a lot of permafrost melt, obviously, but some building practices also cause permafrost to melt, especially because we like to stay warm, so we heat our homes, and that heats foundations and the permafrost underneath too. The picture on the left shows homes undermined by melting permafrost, and the picture on the right shows a bumpy road in Alaska. The thermal equilibrium of the fine grained sediments underlying the roadbed was disrupted during construction. The permafrost started to thaw differentially. Restricting deltaic sedimentation by the construction of dams, levees, etc., results in subsidence too, and is totally our fault. New Orleans again, we don't want to keep flooding that city. But that is the way that sediment would be restored and the elevation increase. As we can see in the picture below, over the past 7,500 years, the river has had almost a rotating sprinkler pattern, spreading sediment throughout the delta region. Instead, we restrict the river through levees, so all the sediment goes in one place. At the mouth of the Mississippi River, we have a nice prograding delta while the delta on either side degrades. Altering surface drainage is also something we do that exacerbates the subsidence and soil volume change hazard. This includes draining soils for agriculture and draining wetland soils for development, and as well as adding water for irrigation. When we drain soil, not only do we decrease the volume by getting rid of the water, but we also change the soil conditions from anoxic to oxic, i.e. no oxygen to oxygen. This means faster organic matter decay, which reduces soil volume. Poor landscaping practices affect subsidence and soil volume change. Adding or removing plants changes water levels, contributing to shrinking of swelling soils. Even just adding water for irrigation can contribute to the collapse of collapsible soils. In the picture below of a golf course in o Oasis, California, the change in landscaping and irrigation is obvious, though the effects of the soil on the soil may be less obvious.